It's here. Windows 10 April 2018 update has officially been released after what was a rather lengthy development cycle that picked up pace in August of last year. Interesting yet, this new version of the OS even faced a delay at the last minute. But the latest version of Windows 10 is now available for everyone, and it comes packed with a range of exciting new additions and improvements. Let's take a tour of all the big new features. Fluent Design is the new design language that Microsoft is now using on all its platforms, and the April update has it in abundance. As you can see, there's a fresh coat of paint in several areas of the operating system, including the Start menu, Taskbar, and Flyouts. You can also spot this design in the Settings app and the Edge web browser, which we'll get into in a minute. The two most noticeable elements of the Fluent Design system are Acrylic and Reveal. Reveal is the lighting effect that follows the movement of your cursor across the screen. It's a subtle little touch that adds a touch of style to the UI. This can also be seen in the Settings app. If we click on the Personalization section, we'll be able to see Acrylic, which is this blurry frosted glass look that you'll find scattered across the operating system. Both these effects are in abundance in the April 2018 update. Both look slick. Now, this, I believe, is a feature that you'll either use heavily or not at all. Timeline is Microsoft's big bet to bring synergy across devices and platforms. Basically, Windows now keeps track of the apps and files you're working on and shares this data across all your hardware so you can quickly get back to what you were doing at a certain point in time. So, for example, if we scroll down here, we can see that Windows has recovered some activities. Clicking on any of them instantly opens it up. Windows 10, I believe, keeps a record of four days here, though if you sign in with a Microsoft account, you can see your history of the past 30 days in timeline. This is a neat addition for productivity, particularly for Office 365 users. Cortana is not in the best state in this new version of Windows 10. The digital assistant is subdued, less contextual, and notably less proactive. For some reason, Microsoft has scattered the experience across the search function and action center, so if you're a regular user of the service, you're going to be in for an unwelcome surprise. If we click on the search box, we'll find that the old home UI is no longer there, meaning you no longer have a place to easily see your upcoming appointments, the latest news, or package tracking details. Not unless you go into the notebook first or ask Cortana directly. Anyway, the big deal is that now the Cortana interface is focused more on your activities. Her notebook now better makes use of skills and list features, and it has been redesigned with a much more streamlined user interface that does a better job of surfacing the different tasks and skills that she is capable of. This, of course, depends upon your region. But if you are in the U.S., you now have access to a growing number of skills, including several for third-party services, which you can add on from this handy panel. And the new Organizer app lets users access lists and reminders all in one place. You can create lists and reminders and manage them easily. This is where you'll also find Collections, a feature that lets you save elements from the web, like recipes and movies. Think of this as Microsoft's attempt at creating something similar to Pinterest, though it is clear that things are at a very early stage. Overall, you can expect a, what can you say, a jarring experience for Cortana in the April update. She shows up in multiple places in the operating system. That is because Microsoft is rethinking Cortana and plans to slowly move her into the Action Center to go with a chat-based user interface that is now part of other digital assistant services like Google Assistant, for example. April 2018 update is simply a stepping stone for these changes, which sadly means that Cortana is very different and not very good. The Microsoft Edge web browser has taken some noteworthy steps forward in the April update. As you just saw, the browser is now lightning quick at launch, opens up in a flash. It has picked up several welcome options too, including the ability to mute tabs and autofill content. Let's test this by viewing a YouTube video. The entire time I knew him, he only ever had one goal. 
to wipe out Muting it universe. right from its tab couldn't be easier. Fluent Design is now officially a thing on Edge, which now also has a sleek new dark theme. There are some nice Fluent Design touches sprinkled throughout the interface, and if we go to the settings, we can choose a theme. The dark one now has a richer feel to it, which is greater if you spend a lot of time in your browser. Speaking of spending times, if you like reading on Edge, you're going to love the attention Microsoft has paid to the reading experience on its browser, no matter if you are reading books, files, or web pages. The reading view is completely revamped and you can easily take your content full screen with the touch of a button, like this. It is also possible to save books in the EPUB format directly in Edge now. Other than that, Microsoft Edge also tracks your reading progress and you can automatically sync your notes and annotations to your new device. One thing that you are really going to like is the redesigned hub, which now stores all your favorites, reading lists, books, history, and downloads in one handy location. These are displayed in a large panel that is easy to navigate. Which brings us to another important addition in the April update, progressive web apps. The world is moving towards PWAs, a new breed of applications that live and breathe online. And Microsoft has taken the first step towards these with this version of Windows 10. The April 2018 update brings support for progressive web apps to the platform, allowing developers to create new types of applications. These can be either as simple as websites behaving like apps or software with more advanced functionality that is hosted on web servers or streamed to users. As of right now, there's a handful of these apps available for download with the promise of more. These applications are really lightweight with limited functionality, but it's a start. One neat little feature in the April 2018 update that everyone is sure to like is the ability to share content with other devices that are physically near you. You can send anything, a web page, a document, photo, audio, or video this way via Bluetooth. And if you're thinking this has shades of the Apple AirDrop feature, then you're not wrong. The best thing about sharing to nearby devices wirelessly this way is that things aren't tied to your Microsoft account, meaning you can share things directly with devices that are in range. Great for sending a video to a friend when you don't have a USB lying around or don't want to take the cloud route to transfer it. All you have to do is select a file and then click on the Share icon. The receiver will get the option to accept or decline the file, and the file will transfer over Bluetooth. In my experience, the transfer went pretty fast for smaller files like document and photos. And while this is a feature that you'll not be using often, it comes in real handy for those times when you need to send over something quickly to others. Another big new addition in the April update is Focus Assist, a redo of the Quiet Hours functionality in Windows 10. Not only does it get a new name, Microsoft has also added in a couple of handy new capabilities. The idea behind Focus Assist is to help you stay focused on what you're doing, and this means shutting off notifications and then showing you a summary of all the things you missed while this feature was enabled. You get plenty of customization options, including setting up which apps can break through when Focus Assist is on and show you the notifications. What I'd really like to see is the ability to automatically turn on Focus Assist when launching certain applications like Word or PowerPoint. Maybe next time. One cool option is to set up Focus Assist to automatically kick in when you're at home. This is handy for folks that use their laptop for both work and play. Gaming is one area where the April update doesn't bring much. Yes, there's the newly redesigned game bar, which we will take a look at in a moment. But mostly, this time, Microsoft focused on small optimizations here and there. As you can see, nothing much has changed here. What has changed is how the game bar looks. It has a fuller look to it. Of course, Focus Assist will come up to make sure no notifications pop up during an intense gaming session you have on your device. But other than that, there is nothing substantial in terms of dedicated improvements here. Each new version of Windows 10 has improved upon the privacy aspects, and the April 2018 update is no different. 
This time around, Microsoft has addressed concerns regarding transparency by putting together a dedicated app that lets you review the information that your device is sending to the company. It's fairly complicated, not something the average users will bother with, but it's nice to see it here. In addition to that, you can also opt out of data collection for inking and typing recognition. That is, if you don't fully trust the company with what you input. With the big new additions covered, let's quickly take a look at some of the smaller enhancements that are now part of the operating system, starting with the Settings app. The April update continues the trend of modernization of the trusty old control panel in Windows. While that is still there, several of its applets have been moved over to setting. You can now find things like fonts, system startup application, sound and devices, and disk cleanup in the settings app now. The on-screen keyboard is another area that received the fluent design treatment, and it now also comes with support for shape writing. If you use a pen, tapping on the text field will open up a pop-up where you can write directly. You can also take advantage of on-screen suggestions while using your physical keyboard, similar to the ones you get on a virtual keyboard on a mobile device. This is handy for when you want to type out a word that you can't remember the spelling of. Interestingly, this feature is off by default and only works on the U.S. keyboard for now. Windows Update is another area that got a look in this version. Microsoft is aware that updates can be inconvenient, and for this reason, it has done a lot of work behind the scenes to speed up and streamline the process. For starters, you'll see an icon in the system tray when there is an update pending installation. Installation itself is now completed in around 20 minutes or less, a definite improvement from over an hour that it used to take on some devices. Also is the ability to keep your PC on while an update is deploying as well as better control over the download bandwidth. People with impairments are sure to appreciate the accessibility improvements Microsoft has packed in the April update. Going to the dedicated Ease of Access section in Settings, you will see that all the options are neatly tucked around in their own panels that you select from the left. Narrator, in particular, has seen a lot of enhancements in this version, and it now works better for navigating both the web and apps. In terms of display options, we have a new addition to how Windows scales legacy apps. This comes in useful if you're running a high-resolution screen or 4K monitor. There's a new option that aims to fix blurry apps, and in fact, a notification actually pops up whenever Windows Display Scaling changes. And speaking of monitor, if you're the proud owner of a fancy HDR monitor, then there is better support for high dynamic range videos on Windows 10. And now, finally, time for some security. This may not be the most visited area of Windows 10 for most users, but it certainly is one of the most important ones. Microsoft has been making a number of notable improvements to the base security of its platform. The Security Center provides you with a complete overview of the protection in place for your system, and this redesigned interface brings all the options together in one place. You can also access its settings from here. Overall, the April update is an excellent release. It doesn't bring large wholesale changes, which is a good thing. What it does offer are small, incremental improvements that refine the overall usage experience of the operating system and offer better productivity and connectivity to you, the user. You may or may not find much use of features like Timeline and the changes made to Cortana, but there are sure to be a handful of additions and improvements that you will appreciate in the April 2018 update as Microsoft continues on its quest to build a safe, secure, reliable, and productive operating platform for everyone. All things considered, the April update does the job, and it does it very well.